Hello, our innocent and pure souls. Uh, I'm still recovering. For me, it's not just about the physical, it's about the inside. The inside struggle between war and peace is still going on. I ask you to praise God, and that's a very powerful praise I taught you. I do hope that the people out there also implement that, so that their lives could be better now, and their souls will be saved after. Because I also imparted great blessing into these worlds. This sister, she brought me some gifts which is in the likeness of Buddha's Sarira. They are from China. I said, you don't have to offer me anything. She said, no, no, this person uh, met me specially in some circumstance, and he told me that it's only for you. He knows your name, and she told me my name. The name is not one that the worldwide people know. And he said his name, oh, I have goosebumps even now. I'm telling you now, I am a Buddha, okay? Just in case I die tomorrow. And I'm a very special Buddha for this period of human calamity. I am not afraid to tell you the truth anymore. I used to be uh, more secretive. I didn't tell you all this personally as so I want to keep my work on Earth a little longer, a little safer for you all. And now I'm telling you two things today. Please continue watching to find out more. On Sunday, July 7, 2024, our most loving Supreme Master Ching Hai, vegan, took time from her intensive meditation retreat to benefit our world to share precious information, disclosing why she has come to Earth during this period and her real identity. Master also discussed why we should be respectful to monks, highlighted the amazing ways animal people assist her in her safety, and more. Hello, our innocent and pure souls, beloved of all heavens and the great, the highest, the almighty God. I'm just trying to talk to you so that you do not worry too much. Uh, I'm still recovering. For me, it's not just about the physical, it's about the inside. The inside struggle between war and peace is still going on. And uh, I try to regain my inside strength, okay? Even though from the outside, you can't tell much. I think I will be okay, but, you know, <laughs> the world is always very changeable. You can never tell from one minute to the next what many of the humans we do to upset the balance of good within themselves and within the societies that surround them as well. Try to be balanced all the time, then you'll be okay. Like, okay, if you know that you have some uh, negative traits inside, but also a lot of goodness as well, then at least try to balance it. Don't encourage, don't support yourself, don't ruin yourself or spoil yourself by just listening to your own negative traits which are imparted to you the day you were born already or even before that. Everyone who was born or will be born into this world has to pay some price without their intention to choose it. It's a price to pay to be in this turbulent and complicated world. Because if you are all pure, then your energy will not mix 
will not belong to this world. You will float upward back to the heavenly abode. So even if the masters, Buddhas, don't have to bear the burden of world karma, they can't stay here on earth. It's difficult to explain. I just make a simple example. It may be befitting. Like you go to find a job, yes? And maybe you get a good job, good payment, and the job that you like. But then you still need to spend eight hours, ten hours or more in serving that job, despite the fact that your body sometimes is not up to it. And your mind is sometimes really troubling you so much, but you're taxing it to try to fulfill the job that is expected of you. That is a problem. It's not like something that you want to or not want to. You just have to if you want that job. You know, being born in the physical body, most of us will have to be busy with some physical work. Otherwise, you can't take care of yourself. Even if you have a big inheritance from your parents or some relatives, you still need to work to make sure that it stays fixed and enough for you to continue to live. And being jobless is also a difficult job because if you don't have uh, interesting things to do in your life, then your mind might go haywire sometimes or be influenced by some bad negative tendency from within or without. Now, everything is work in this world, yes? Even if you are a monk, you also need to work in the temple and also take care that you have enough knowledge, enough worthiness to answer the demands, the expectations of your followers. And you will be criticized, you will be worshipped, you will be demanded to work for the mundane questions, answering stuff, or you will be put onto a you know, high pedestal and they will expect that you are Buddha already, you are a saint already, and there's no end to their demands. Every little mundane thing, they will come to you, and if you don't answer or supply the way they want it, you will be under suspicion, you know, of any kind. And by the way, talking about monks, yeah, I just remember something. Sometimes I saw some monks somewhere, by the way, being criticized by other monks or other people. And sometimes if just something they say is not uh, supposed to be correct or according to Buddhist sutra, then they will be criticized or harassed or banned or kicked out. All kinds of things that could happen to a monk even, yes? I would, by the way, tell you, please, don't do anything bad to the monks. There are some bad monks, for sure. But if you don't know much about him or her, please don't say anything that damages his or her reputation and their spiritual endeavor as well. Don't criticize any monks. Don't let them be out of job. Let them do what they can in their capacity, especially the monks who are vegan, okay? or at least vegetarian. Same with other monks, priests, and nuns of other orders from other religions. If you don't understand the working of karma and the working of the bad situation in this period of time that our planet could be destroyed at any moment, please, at least don't make it worse, okay? For the monks, the Mahayana monks, I, I don't know much about Hinayana, except that most of them eat animal people, meat, any kind of meat, any time. Maybe they eat once a day or one and once a day, but they eat all kinds of animal people, meat. The Buddha has said that whoever eats meat is not his disciple, and he is not their teacher. It's in uh, Lankavatara Sutra, Tripitaka, number 671. At that time, Arya, or sage Mahamati, or great wisdom, Bodhisattva Mahasattva, said to the Buddha, Bhagavan, or world-honored one, I see that in all worlds, the wandering and births and deaths, the enlaced animosities, 
and the falling into evil paths are all caused by meat-eating and cyclical killing. Those behaviors increase greed and anger and make living beings unable to escape from suffering. That is truly very painful. Mahamati, having heard my words, if any of my disciples does not honestly consider that and still eats meat, we should know that he is of the Candela, or killer's lineage. He is not my disciple, and I am not his teacher. Therefore, Mahamati, if anyone wishes to be my relative, he should not eat any meat. That I know, okay? Now, the Mahayana monks, meaning the great vehicle monks, they eat vegan, or at least vegetarian, meaning maybe sometimes they drink milk. I am not so sure what they eat, but they tolerate, you know, vegetarians. Not knowing too much about how the egg industry is so brutal to little chicks and chicken people and not knowing too much about the inhumane treatment of the cow people in the animal people factory, okay? So please do not be so harsh. At least they do their best, what they know, what they think is the best. These monks, they wear monks' robes. Maybe they don't do much. Maybe they don't know much about Buddhism. You know, they just know or understand as much as they can. Because they don't always meet the good master to teach them the real meaning behind all the teachings of the Buddhas. So please keep quiet, okay? If you don't have trust in them or you don't respect them, at least refrain from insulting them or making their life hard because they wear the monk's robe. That represents compassion and the teaching of the Buddhas. It just represents it, at least like that. So they will maybe reawaken the seat in some followers and rekindle the compassion of the Buddha, okay? When you see the monks, the Mahayana monks, at least, you know, they will remember the Buddha taught compassion and vegan. You know, I told you already in the Suragama Sutra, the Buddha said, we should not even wear silk, should not even use down anything, and should not drink milk, even anything to do with animal people. So now, uh, most people don't know all this, you know, they don't have time and they don't have a good teacher to teach them. So please do be tolerant. Just be thankful to all the monks, you know, in the past, present and future. You might meet them, you might notice them or you might not, but they are something to keep some balance in this world from all the mundane worry and all the ambition for worldly gain and goofing people, okay? Our world is in terrible danger right now. Any moment it could collapse. I'm telling you now because I'm not sure if I could last also. I'm still not fit to work yet because inside I'm not well enough yet. So I, I have to recover. Just uh, because many of you worry so much, so I tell you a thing or two to keep reminding you whenever I can, okay? But I'm not feeling up to work all out for a Supreme Master TV, for example. Now, monks, as I told you, they're also human, yes? They might not be on the same level yet, but they are trying to. They are aiming to be there. That is important also. This energy of longing, of wanting to be Buddha again, to be one with the original again, be one with God again, that is a very good energy to balance our world, okay? Now, you see, like when you were a kid, you were learning just the ABCs, but you wanted to learn to go to college later. And that's very good, okay? And now, by the way, talking about God, many would think that Buddhist followers do not believe in God. It's not true. Because, for example, in China, 
to everything not good, they will say, oh, or the Tiena, meaning, oh my God. It's just like you say it in English, just different, just different expressions, different languages. In our religions, all mention God. When somebody asks the Buddha, is there any God? The Buddha said, I cannot say whether there's God or there's no God, but there is something from which all things come into existence and to which all things will return. And if it's not God, then tell me what is it? Huh? In other religions, they say it more straight. They say, God made us in His own image. Yeah, that's the, our origin. We're God's children and we will return to that Godness, okay? So do not argue with me anymore about whether there is God or there is no God. Or oh, worshipping God is not Buddhism. But in all religions, mostly they follow the masters who are the representatives of God or whatever religion that uh, professes they have God or true Dhamma teaching in there. Yeah. They respect the masters. They follow the masters. They worship the masters. They believe the masters. And some even proclaim, if God and the master are standing next to me, whom should I bow to? Whom should I follow? I follow the master. Because the master is the one who taught me, who lifts me out of misery, lifts me out of the cycle of Buende. So the followers, they always worship the masters of their choice, of their period of time. But in the back of their mind, they all know there is God. And I'm telling you now, I'm just preaching the universal religion, okay? We have God, and then we have masters. So even the master is the one who personally teaches us and brings us teaching and blessing and is helping us in any way. But there is God. Yes, it's just like your parents. They're very rich and powerful, but they have to work in different fields. Or in the house, they have servants. They have a you know, wet nurse to take care of you from small. And of course, you love that wet nurse because she spends a lot of time with you. She plays with you. She spoils you. She loves you and she does anything you want. But that is because of your parents' authority, because of your parents' prestige, because of your parents' uh, salary. So you have to be filial to your parents, no matter what. So whatever religion you follow, you must remember there's God behind it. Because before the Master came down to earth, who has given that Master's existence? So do not ever forget God Almighty, the origin of all things, and of your existence as well. In, you know, when we pray, normal people, they don't have to be Buddhist or anything, or don't have to know much about Buddha's teachings. We say, Oh God and Buddha, please bless me. Oh God and Buddha know what I'm doing. They mention God also, and the Chinese also. I don't know much about other countries, because I don't speak their language, but I'm sure they would do the same. Okay? So of course your masters are your refuge, your reliance for this life. But don't forget your Father, the Almighty God the Most High, the greatest of all things. Don't forget that. If you forget, you will be very, very unfilial children. That's why I ask you to praise God, yeah? Okay? And that's a very powerful praise I taught you. And I do hope that the people out there also implement that so that their life could be better now and their souls will be saved after because I also imparted great blessing into these worlds, okay? And God's gift is to us all and has given me permission to share it with you. So don't forget to praise God, to praise the Son of God, praise all the masters, and thank all the noble beings who obey God's will to make your life possible. You see, you need all kinds of noble people, people who walk out on the street risking their lives to investigate cruelty to the animal people, people who go on the street to protest war, 
risking imprisonment and being beaten up or killed. People who march in all kinds of weather to fight for the animal people's freedom and deserved life on earth. We are in debt to all beings on this planet. Even the animal people teach us to no end unconditional love. I am inside the room alone, but many times my life is saved from spies, you know, and all that, because I'm involved in war, you know, I uh, provoke anger from the war party people. And I spoke too straightforwardly in some political uh, situations because I have pain for other citizens who are helpless and innocent being harmed by this kind of devil in the form of humans. So they hate me, you know. I have enemies, I don't just have friends. I, I also <laughs> have some unexpected friends, <laughs> like some monk, you know, who say that uh, he is my friend. I never knew him. I don't know his name, I don't know where he's from. I never saw his face in my whole life, for example, like that. Well, it's good to have a friend. Though someone sent me his interview about me on an Alexis YouTube channel, I don't know him at all. I only remembered that he wore a very bright multicolor plus multicolor monk precept sashes at the interview. Never have I seen such glamorous, colorful monk sashes in my whole life. At least he's not my enemy. He doesn't proclaim me as his enemy. That's very good already. Though he was not well informed about the truth of my being uh, in the outer worldly sense as well as my inner spiritual status. You see, just as a primary student cannot understand a university professor is pardonable. But please do not yourself, out of love or admiration for me, attach my name or my work to any of the monks. Uh, because who knows, they might misunderstand or others might misunderstand and think that I try to use that monk's name to be more famous. I don't want anything to do with anyone who is famous or not famous, anything at all. I work alone with some of your help, that's all, okay? And other uh, animal people have the fox people come and tell me, don't open the window today, don't step out of your door today into the garden, even the back garden. Because the spies are there, you know, observing you from afar. Uh, Nowadays, it's easy to observe anyone. Yes. If you suspect they're there, it's so easy. And the bird people come, the fox people come, and uh, even the neighbor's dog person barks suddenly. I have a place where the dog person never barks. Only when I'm in danger, then God barks at me. Don't go out in the garden to meditate. Don't go in the shed, because spies are watching. Because I like to be in the shed at night, for example. It's more quiet and alone, you know, away from work and everything. So I can have more peace to meditate. But some days the dog person tells me don't. And some nights I'm already outside the dog person. But, you know, and tells me go back inside now, go back inside now. And the bird people even wake up in the middle of the night, come and quack around. And the fox people go all running all to me to tell me don't stay outside, go back inside. I'm forever in debt to everyone. The farmer, the vegetable, planter, everyone that I'm still alive today. And all the people who made the natural vegan medicine that I can take, and the doctors who took care of me in the time of a life and death situation before, and the karma was too overwhelming so that my body became affected and I had to have an operation and all that stuff. I'm forever in debt to them, and I pray for them. I thank God for protecting them and liberating them. I do what I can also. Even some of the politicians whom I didn't know before suddenly brought me out like the Honolulu, Hawaii, where before. He uh, 
praised me and gave me a certificate of honorary citizenship, remember? She also brings love around the world where there is hate. She brings hope where there is despair. And she brings understanding where there is misunderstanding. She is the light of a great person, an angel of mercy for all of us. Yeah, even just that. I was able to have an excuse to bring him to my near realm. I'm so happy about that, so happy. And anyone who has been good to me, though they have not been vegan even, I could take their karma and bring them up to my near realm, yes. And on my world, dog people, recently they reported to me that one of my dog people died. Oh, she was very, very attached to me. She was happy, my dog person, formerly. Some of them are my former dog people who came back to protect me in some area of existence for some period of time. Uh, saying that, by the way, um, one time someone brought me a special gift and I forgot to thank. Now I just remember. Uh, some years ago, must be maybe at least uh, five, six years when we still had the center in Montaigne in France. There was one of your sisters, you know her. I don't want to mention her name because I don't want you to swarm around her. I know her and you all know her. She's Chinese and she spoke of many of her uh, wondrous experiences about seeing the Buddhas coming to see us when we have a retreat. So you know her very well. and. Uh, her brother is a monk also having a temple in China. They are both our association members. So not all monks are bad, okay? Please, do not think anything. This sister, she brought me some gift, which is in the likeness of Buddha's Sarira. They are from China. I said, you don't have to offer me anything. Why? I offer it to the temple because they needed more. So she said, no, no, this person uh, met me specially at some circumstance, and he told me that it's only for you. I asked her, how does he know who I am anyway? I never met him, and he doesn't know me, he never met me. So she said, no, he knows your name, and she told me my name. The name is not one that the worldwide people know. He knew it. I don't ever know him. And he said his name is Mahakajipa. Oh, I have goosebumps even now. He said his name is Kajip and my name is so and so. He mentioned that name, which is supposed to be one of the Buddha's uh, disciples in Buddha's time. <laughs> the whole world doesn't know that name that I have. What for should I tell you any name? How would you know anyway? How could I prove it to you? Yeah, so I am very grateful to him, and I forgot to thank him all this time. I was uh, just like uh, taken aback and surprised, and uh, she talked about her stuff, you know, experiences, and meditation, uh, result, praising me and thanking me, all that. But I just remember she said, his name is Kajipa, and your name is so-and-so. And Kajipa, or oh, when she told me, I just kind of, registered it, but didn't think too much because I was busy, you know. Just now I, I mentioned about it. I have goosebumps because now I think, so I have to thank him anyway, whoever you are, as you for giving me the valued, meaningful gift. I don't know who you are. We never met, but thank you for trusting me like that and mentioning my name as one of the Buddha's foremost disciples. I thank you so much. Very, very much. And may the Buddhas in all the directions bless you. My God Almighty, bestow on you all the best, and your loved ones as well. And may you reach whatever noble goal you intend to do. Your name just gives me goosebumps. Yeah, because uh, Kajif is one of the deeply revered uh, monks and successor of the Buddha. And he is perfect in every way. 
So I thank you for telling me that name again. Even if you have chosen it as your name out of reverence, just like in Christianity, people choose their name Jesus or Paolo or Simon, just in reverence to the saints who followed Jesus. May you keep that holy name forever. May the Buddha bestow on you so much blessing and wisdom, the way he did to the revered Mahakaji Bodhisattva. Thank you. And thank you also, the sister. We didn't have much time to talk about that at that time because I'm always busy. You came always when we were in retreat, and that's why you came. And we never had much time to talk about that. I thank you for being a good follower of the truth. I thank you for bringing me that gift, which I treasure. And I carry it in different countries for some time, but the last time I had to run and I could not uh, carry it with me. It may be somewhere in my old uh, cave, somewhere before. If I have a chance, I will find it again. Don't worry, okay? Anyway, it's not about the relic. It's a symbol of the Buddha, of his uh, holiness and compassion for the world. I took it into my heart already, so I will never lose it. Thank you. Just if you see that man ever again, please give him a vow for me, you know, as if you bow to Mahakaji. One vow, two vow, three vows, as many vows as you want to thank him for the precious uh, gift, even though it doesn't mean anything uh, money-wise, but it's more than the best jewelry in the world for me. I thank you. Thank you and thank him a lot, a lot, a lot. Please tell him that if you ever see him again. Uh, I mean that to all human beings, animal beings, and even trees and uh, everything on this planet. That's why I'm trying to serve all of you. Okay? So again, if there's an animal who you think is not good, think again, okay? Yes. I know there are some good monks and some bad monks, but you have to to know the real thing before you criticize them. I know some of my monks before were also not too good. Uh, one of them even uh, copied me in every way, you know, <laughs> not just the teaching, but every way. Even wearing some femininely similar clothes as a monk. Some people come in, just get initiated and don't really practice anything. It's just for very ambitious goals of their own, you know, for fame and gain, so you can see it. And they try to copy me and all that. Oh, dear God, please remember karma, okay? If you are already a master, you will know it. If you are a Buddha, you will know it. And I'm telling you now, I am a Buddha, okay? Just in case I die tomorrow. Now, and I'm a very special Buddha for this period of human's calamity, all right? Believe it or not, it's up to you. I don't dare to lie in front of God Almighty or all the saints and sages in the whole universe. I am the Maitreya Buddha that you have been waiting for. I am also Jesus or the Messiah that you are waiting for. I say this once and for all. God wants me to tell you that. So do not waste your precious time waiting anymore. Just be morally good. Praise God who loves you and uplifts you. Thank all the masters, Buddhas, for all you have been given and for more if you ask for. Thank for your liberation. Our world could collapse any time now. Please hurry. Please hurry, repent, do good, praise God, praise all the masters. Please hurry, in case... <sighs> Heavens, workers, and I could not hold any longer because of the great karma of the whole world. Of course, there is a risk of telling you this truth about my Buddhahood. 
in my work. But, you know, I have to tell you, sometimes God wants me to because it is a necessity. Otherwise, I may not have a chance to tell you again. I hope I continue to exist for a while longer and help you and the world. But if not, at least I tell you the whole truth so that you know you have the right to know, you deserve to know, since you have been so dedicated and faithful. I thank you, all of you who are that faithful and dedicated to God. That is the only most important goal, the only true purpose of your life. And as my disciples, you have found your purpose, your goal. You know clearly now what to do to reach your goal. Some of you are almost there. I came here this time, special, just for humanity. I do what I can, okay? Some people say that if you are an Ahan or a saint and you're a master, then you don't know that you are a Buddha, a master. You do know. If you are, you know. It's not because uh, uh, all the Arahans or some masters don't know they are masters, then, then that means uh, no master should know that they are a master or not a master. They know. Some don't know because they are not there yet. They just follow their master and rely on their master's teaching and master power to pass on the teaching to other fellow initiates among their own followers. That's because of the master. They mentioned their master. They will revere their master, for example. They all know. The Buddha did not mention his master, but he did follow some master, some wrong one, until he woke up and got the right one. Now, otherwise, how would the Buddha know that he is a Buddha? Huh? He told you that he is a Buddha, clear and openly. And he even said, I have been a Buddha since forever, ever, ever. So from time in memory or even. That doesn't mean Buddha was boasting. He just told his disciples the whole truth. Yeah, you can see his teaching. You can see his blessing to his disciples and his people. Then you know that he is a Buddha, whether or not he told you. Lord Jesus did know that he is a son of God. That's why he told you. My father and I are one. What for did he dare to say that? Because it is the truth. And the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said that he was the messenger of Allah. He told the truth. If you graduated as a medical doctor, wouldn't you know it? You'd know it. Only when you're still learning to be a doctor and people ask you, are you a doctor? Then you say, oh, not yet. I am aiming to be. I know some medical, you know, uh, ways to treat people and medicine and all that, but I'm not yet a doctor. Because they're not. At least they're honest. Only the ones who are not yet a doctor and go out and fake it to treat people or something for their own purpose to gain money and then run away afterward from the, the law. Then, of course, there's a difference. If you are not yet a master, if you don't know yet you are a Buddha, you cannot say that you are a Buddha. Because that is very bad karma. I tell you why. Because you are, you are lying. That's the biggest lie according to Buddhist law, you know, the universal law that Buddha taught us. The biggest lie. Why? Because you mislead many other people to fall into the same low level as you. And also you offend the Buddhas of the ten directions, the Buddhas of all times, the masters of all directions, because you're degrading them. You're dragging them down into your low demonic level. That is the worst crime you can commit in the universal spiritual law. That's why you should not proclaim yourself a master when you're not. Buddha said, you will be condemned in a relentless hell if committing such sin. Because you don't know anything. You just rely on these demons temporarily possessing you, and you have some little hula hula up somewhere, and then you think you are something. And you make your followers think that you are something. 
and then act as if you're degrading all the Buddha's status, like comparing their superior holy status to your lowly demonic possessed level. You got that now? So don't do that, okay? If you are a Bodhisattva, a true one, you will know it. If you know nothing about the real inner spiritual world, then you are not. So do not cheat vulnerable people for your own demonic low motive. The funny Bodhisattva, he knows. You see, she told the Buddha what she possessed, what she practiced. The Quaning method, you know, the hearing inside method, the inner teaching method. That's why she can hear everywhere and help all sentient beings who call on her for help. Yeah? She's telling Buddha and his assembly the truth of her or his spiritual status, real status. Well, sometimes Quaning Bodhisattva appears in a female form and sometimes in the male form, so you can call as him or her, it doesn't matter. We don't really have any sexual, uh, <laughs> physical organ in the soul in order to say that I'm a male or I'm a female. Hmm? Last life, the last one just before this life, I was a male in India. Yeah? I was Baba Sawan Sinchi, Maharaj. Now I tell you the truth. I am not afraid to tell you the truth anymore. I used to be uh, more secretive. I didn't tell you all this personally. As I want to keep my work on Earth a little longer, a little safer for you all. And now I'm telling you two things today. The last life I was Baba Sawan Singh Ji, Maharaj. And this life, I am my true self. The real great Buddha has come. This time was special purpose. I sacrificed everything, many things. Every day, every day I have trouble, I have pain, I have unfavorable issues. But I can deal with all that. I can deal with all that. I'm not telling you to feel sorry for me. No, no. If I can help anyone, I'm willing to. It's just you should know the truth now in case I'm recovering but I'm not sure if I can last long physically. So I'm just telling you two things, because I'm not afraid anymore. There's not much more anyone can do to me now. By God's grace, I can help anyone. I can liberate anyone who trusts me, who believes in me. But they should be more compassionate for themselves also. You see, to be a dignified human, it's not just relying on my help. God helps those who help themselves. That's what it is. You should help yourself. You are the Buddha, the future Buddha. I mean, on the way to Buddhahood, you are the children of God. Be worthy of it. That's all. Be dignified. Be good for yourself and for others. Hmm? And every day be grateful to God, to all the saints and sages who sacrifice their utmost for you. And that's why no wonder all the followers of the real masters truly worship them and truly are grateful to them because they have experiences of greatness from the master's power and blessing. Always remember God and all the saints and sages and thank them to know him. Anytime you remember, you give a few seconds, a minute, to thank them, to be grateful for whatever you can achieve in this world and more in the spiritual domain, okay? That's all you have to do. If you don't want to help me to save the world, then I don't force you either. But if you know something, a little bit of things, like going out and giving people flyers or bringing some vegan meal to somebody, that is nothing much, okay? Don't boast about it. Even outside people who are not my so-called disciples, they go out to help different organizations voluntarily, using their own money, their own uh, uh, sweat and tears to help, and their own donations also, or their time, their precious time. 
and nobody praises them or anything. They're not even on TV. Many unsung heroes are doing outstanding work. They're helping a lot, not just voluntarily, but in everyday life, you know? Even just to take care of their families. It's a hard job already. And dealing with colleagues and with the boss in the workplace just to survive, that's a hard job already. So if you, my so-called believers, go out and do some little thing, or help with Supreme Master TV in some way, do not think this big deal. Well, I know most of you do not. Uh, I'm just saying in case, yeah? Yes. Because you practice meditation, you have your inner vision of heavens and earth, and you, you know so much about karma, about the consequences of bad deeds. If you truly practice, you know that already, so you wouldn't do any silly things. I'm just saying that in case any of you who are still at a low level, you know, uh, falling into this kind of trap, those who already fell, already, you know, are taken away by zealous demons and ghosts, I know all of them, but I can't do much about it. It's their choice, okay? And even though I feel sorry for them, maybe that's what they want. <laughs> if the, the karma leads them that way, and they stay with this kind, then it's, it's their choice. There's not much I can do about it. I'm just crying for them, worrying about them, and their horrible afterlife. But I can't do much, okay? Even God lets all humans have free will. Who am I to stop anybody? Hmm. Also, I don't have enough time, and I can't even go from door to door to tell them, oh, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that, it's bad karma for you, hell is waiting for you. I can't do that, huh? So you take care of yourself, whoever still believes in me. Please take care of yourself. Be humble, be grateful, be diligent in your practice, and be good to others whenever you can, if you can, okay? Ever since you followed me and received initiation from me, I never asked you to do anything. You get together and do things yourselves. And even if you don't help me to do Supreme Master TV work, I also say nothing. I never scold you for not doing that. At least you are vegan. At least you do meditation on and off. At least you don't harm anyone. I am grateful already, thanks to God. So don't worry, do what you can, okay? Just don't boast about it, don't be too proud about it. You will lose your marriage if you are too proud, because that's the ego that thinks, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Get away from the ego, then all sins of karma will leave you also, okay? May you all be blessed abundantly. May God open the merciful store and grant you more strength, more wisdom, and more compassion to continue the short life that we are having on this planet. And it could be suddenly cut off even, you know that. So be the treasurer of your precious time, of your great fortune of encountering a good method to practice, like Kuan Yin method. Nothing else should matter at all. Okay? All right. Thank you, God. Thank you, all the masters, Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, saints, sages, and, and all the noble good beings who do God's will to help others on this planet, all beings on this planet, sentient or non-sentient. I'm up in forever debt to God Almighty. And I thank you, all of you. May you all be blessed. We all be loved, feel it, and practice it. Amen. Most beloved Master, thank you so much for taking the time to reassure the world with a message even under such challenging circumstances. We are again reminded of how Master always thinks of others before herself and her love is truly immeasurable and infinite. We wish that all take to heart your advice that we should offer our gratitude and praises to God Almighty, the Masters, and Saints and Sages as much as we can in our lives. 
May it be God's will that Master rapidly and fully recovers now and that she always enjoys peace, comfort, and safety. To learn why we should not associate Master's name or teachings with any monks or priests in the world and more of the severe consequences of proclaiming oneself an enlightened Master for fame, please tune in on Monday, July 15, 2024 on Between Master and Disciples for the full broadcast of this message. Also, for your reference, please check out the previous related Between Master and Disciples messages such as the Preciousness of the Human Body, The King of War's Revelation About War and Peace, The Three Types of Masters, etc. To view these and more related Between Master and Disciples messages, all free for download, please visit SupremeMasterTV.com and search for Buddha Messiah here.